All right, so in this example, I want to incorporate all the transaction costs associated with a real estate transaction and also add into the um, analysis the aspect of time value of money. Okay, in our previous year analysis, we only look at how much we put in and how much we can get out, but that was more like a one-shot analysis of the current situation. We want to look at this from a, a longer time frame and, and incorporate time value of money and then use the tools that we're familiar with in finance to see how does it compare to traditional corporate finance investment? So what we're going to add to this uh, analysis is the um, fees we have to pay upon exit of this investment in three years. Time. So we bought the condo for 1.9 million, and let's assume it uh, appreciates in value by 3% per year. We're going to estimate what the final sale price would be like in three years time. And that's going to be the 1.9 million multiplied by one plus the 3% appreciation per year to the power of three. So you have about 2 million or so, okay, 2.07 million uh, proceeds, actually sale price. But we want to see, when we incorporate all the fees, how much do we have left in the end? So the first element we're going to uh, calculate is the income tax. When we discussed in the slides earlier, I gave you an example of uh, income tax for one year. But here we held the property for three years, so how does this work? First, we look up our table. We held the property for three years. So uh, the table says if you hold for three years, the deduction is 77%. So we're going to use that 77% from the table. Okay, and multiply this to the sale price. So that means we allow a deduction of 1.6 million baht. That means our taxable income is 477,000 baht. Remember, this was a three-year holding period. Taxation typically is talked about in terms of uh, um, annual income, right? So we have to analyze this income by dividing this by our holding period. We held this for three years, so divided by three. This is a per year taxable income. Now we can use this number to compare with the lookup table to see what is the bracket we end up in and how much tax we have to pay. Well, the first bracket is 300,000 baht. And our taxable income per year is only 160,000 baht. So we end up in the first bracket. What we pay is 5%. So the tax due is going to be about 8,000 baht. But that's on a per year basis. Remember, we took the taxable income of the three year holding period divided by the to calculate the tax per year. But now we have to multiply it back okay, by the uh, number of years to get the total amount of tax due. And that's about 24,000 baht. We can compare this to the final sale price and it comes out to about 1.15%. So slightly higher than the corporate rate. The corporate rate says just to 1% of final sale price. So that would have been just uh, 20,761 baht. Okay. Right, so that's the tax due on sale. Other expenses you have to pay, special business tax. Uh, this is going to be 3.3% of the final sale price. I'm not adding the layer of appraisal value. I'm assuming that appraisal value equals sale price. Okay, but in practice, if your appraisal value is different from sale price, all you have to do is take the maximum value and the rest of the calculation will follow. So there's a special business tax of 68500 uh, transfer fee 1%. The actual transfer fee is 2%. We're splitting it with the buyer 50-50. So we're only uh, contributing 20700 And broker commission of 3%, which is about 62000 and so on. So add them all up. These are our other fees. So our net proceeds is 20, uh, 2076000 minus income tax minus other fees. So your net proceeds is going to be 1.9 million. Well, you bought it for 1.9, it grew by 3% per year. When you sold it, you still got 1.9 million. So not a lot of appreciation. Now, even though there is capital appreciation, but to realize that capital appreciation involves a lot of transaction costs that may eat away Okay, what you thought you're going to be benefiting from. So that's something you should be aware of, Okay, at least when investing in real estate um, uh, assets. In most countries around the world, there'll be a lot of transaction costs associated with changing hands, so, so this logic remains the same. 
but how you calculate the number may be different according to context. Now we can look at the investment cash flow. We bought a condo for 1.9 million. Okay, so our investment cash flow is minus 1.9. Our net rental, let's carry that from the yield page. Our net rental cash flow is going to be our net annual, uh, our annual rent minus our total expenses. And we get about 122,600 baht per year. And net proceeds in the end is uh, sometimes in real estate also called reversion cash flow. Reversion from revert. You know, we're reverting the ownership back away from you. Now we add them all up. We can get, we can call this a free cash flow to the firm, which really free cash flow from the property. Then calculate the IRR based on this. So still good, okay, about 6% or so. About 6% or so. This is because we're kind of offsetting. Uh, even though we have appreciation, but our appreciation is eaten away by transaction cost. So effectively, there's no uh, return comes from just the uh, rental, the rental aspect. So our IRR here compares very closely to the net rental yield in the earlier page. I made example so that we can see here that if you do the analysis based on the cash flow, there are two components to return. One is your rental yield. Okay, the next component is your appreciation. So our numbers here suggest that there's very little appreciation, so our returns 